Uh, so we're going to do some typesetting with Brian Kernigan. Here's Brian Kernigan. Look at him, looking all kind and wise and Canadian. And uh, so when you think of Brian, when I say Brian Kernigan, you probably think of this book, the C Programming Language. Uh, or if you're a little bit younger, like me, you think of the, uh, this second edition. And um, as uh, Francis said yesterday, this is a terrific book. I think there are probably people in the room who can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think while the C language was all Dennis Ritchie, the text of this book is all Brian Kernigan. I think that's how it worked, right? But apart from this book, with which he is synonymous, Brian Kernigan has written, depending on how you count, 12 or 15 other books, uh, or co-written 12 or 15 other books, and he has not just written them, he has typeset them. Now, it's often forgotten that typesetting was the excuse for the Unix project in the first place. At Bell Labs, there was a spare machine in the corner, and so can we have this? We'll build you a typesetting system. Bell Telephone produced an awful lot of documentation, internal and external documentation. A new typesetting system would be a huge benefit to the organization. So, it's Koenigan's first book, The Elements of Programming Style. It's about code review and refactoring. Two phrases you won't find in that book. But anyway, he wrote, co wrote this with Bill Plauger, of course, fine author in his own right. And this was time set in New Roman using a graphic system for the typesetter and a PDP 1145. Now, this is a bit of a brag, but it's also a promise, right? You too can do your own typesetting if you've got a computer like this. That's not the computer, that's the computer up there, right? So, uh, step forward uh, four years, we've got the first edition of C programming language. They've had an upgrade. The PDP 1170, I don't know if that's physically bigger or smaller, right? I don't know how computers were working in the mid 70s. Um, step forward another three years to Software Tools in Pascal, which is an amazing book, which you should all read. It's still in print, it's ruinously expensive, get a second hand copy. Um, it's really, really good. And now they're using this Mergenthal Linotron 202. And this was an interesting machine, apparently, very, very high quality typesetter. Uh, it had a proprietary font format that Kernigan and Pike, Rob Pike, reverse engineered so that they could print chess problems with nice boards and proper pieces. <laughs> okay? Uh, where are we now? We are now 1988. And look at this. This is a, a pipeline, a shell pipeline. TROF is the typesetting program. Typesetter runoff, uh, originally written by uh, Joe Asana, who unfortunately died quite young. The maintenance of that program was taken on by Kernigan. Uh, PIC and TBL and EQN are trough preprocessors, so you can do line diagrams and tabular data and formulae and equations and produce them as beautiful camera ready copy. So that's 1998. Uh, 10 years, leap forward 10 years now, Kernigan's about to go and become a professor at Princeton. Wrote this book with Rob Pike, another terrific book. And now look, we can do this on commodity hardware. We don't need to say what the typesetter was. Got another little preprocessor in there, GRAP, which is a GRAP, which is a graph language uh, developed by John Bentley and Brian Kernigan, I think. Uh, leap forward 20 years now. This is published in 2020. It's a delightful book. Or it's just delightful. It's, it makes, oh, it must have been brilliant working at Bell Labs if you were super clever. Um, anyway, he did this on his laptop. He's now using GROF, which is a GNU trough replacement, uh, written by Jim Clark, who also did a lot of work, XGML, XML, XPAT, Parser, and all that kind of thing. GoScript, the free PostScript conservator, and other open source Unix tools. Open source Unix? Linux. Okay, so he's traveled that journey from proprietary Unix right at the beginning to uh, free software now, and then published just at the end of last year, the Orc Programming Language Second Edition, which is an update to a book first written in 1988 about a language developed in 1977 because a man in his 80s decided to put full Unicode support into a 40-year-old program. <laughs> right? That's incredible. There's a guy in his 80s who's still doing fantastic work, right? It's just incredible. Here he is. This is from a, an amazing video, 1982. He's just casually putting together a spell checker using shell pipelines in a corporate video with his feet on the desk, right? As a curious footnote, Asana and Kernigan's Trough Users Manual doesn't say how it was typeset, a blot on an otherwise exemplary publishing career. <laughs>